Hi friends, it's Jen. I hope you enjoy this special episode all about my incredible sister, Jill Stanley. If you're looking for more, please know that an extended version of this episode with over 15 minutes of extra content will be released as a Detours episode on our Patreon page on February 2nd, 2023. Our Detours series is full of extras and available at tier two and above. Check out the link to our Patreon page in the show notes. But most importantly, thank you so much for listening. On this episode of Common Mystics, we deep dive into mystics in the making. I'm Jennifer James. I'm Jill Stanley. We're psychics. We're sisters. We are common mystics. We find extraordinary stories in ordinary places. And today we're talking to the one and only Jill Stanley. Well, Jennifer, thanks so much for having me. Hi, Jill. Are you ready? I have some questions for you. I'm super nervous. It sucks being on the hot seat. Oh, you're a natural. Oh, okay, go on. So my first question for you is mm-hmm. about your earliest memory of being aware that there was a spirit world around you or that there were spirits around you. I always knew that I had Lady Timmy and Alice around me. And who were Lady Timmy and Alice? They were my imaginary friends. Like, I knew I couldn't see them, but I knew that they were there. I knew that fact the same way I knew that I had a sister, Jennifer. I had a sister, Jessica. Like, those were just the facts in which I lived. But I remember specifically being really young in diapers I think mom was giving everyone baths Mm -hmm. and I was laying outside the bathroom upstairs doorway in the hallway between our bedroom and mom's bedroom. And there was something we referred to as the big light. And I remember looking at the big light and focusing, like purposely focusing on the big light and the noises around me went away and the light grew bigger and bigger and bigger and changed. And I knew when I was laying on the floor that I didn't know the words for it, but I knew that I was somewhere out. Like I knew I was tapping into something, but I didn't know what, Mm. if that makes sense. So I remember that experience because Lady Timmy and Alice to me were not extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Like like, they were about extraordinary as I have an older sister, Jennifer. It was like, they're there. That's just the way life was. And they stayed with you for a while (laughs) through your child. Didn't they? a nerd. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Yes, Like, how old do you think you were when you stopped playing with your imaginary friends, Lady Timmy and Alice? They didn't go away, but I stopped referring to them by name. Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? Like, I still referred to this presence, but it wasn't like, oh, that's Alice or Timmy or Lady. It was just... I know I would just refer to them in a different way. And the communication was different. So instead of me playing with Timmy, I was like, can you believe the day I had basically in spirit, if that makes sense. I felt more comfortable being by myself in spirit. So like if I were having a bad day, I would go in the basement and be like, be in that moment in those feelings with spirit as opposed to calling a best friend. Mm -hmm. That's just who I was. Like I feel more comfortable being vulnerable in spirit than with people. You describe knowing very, very early on that there was a spirit world, almost being able to focus and tap into a spirit world and having relationships with spirits that, you know, you called imaginary friends. We all call Jill's imaginary friends, but Mm -hmm. having real relationships and having real communication with these beings that were not human beings at a very early Mm -hmm. age. And then you describe things changing. Talk about that change in the house. Like what was happening? I grew up, I never lived with dad. Right. And dad, for me, like think little happy Jilly, whenever dad was around, there would always be a shift in energy that I Mm -hmm. recognized right away. I just didn't like him around only because no one else was happy anymore. Mm-hmm. He would just bring this whole different vibe. And it was like, dude, you're bringing me down. <laughs> right. Along with that, I spent the first probably six years of my life 
totally me and mom. She was my everything. She was cuddly. She was sweet. She was funny. She would give me space. She wasn't all up on my shit. Like she was not a helicopter mom. She didn't have to worry about me. I would just kind of check in. I would be like, I'm playing in the other room with Lady Tiffany and Alice. How you doing? You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't like we just had a like a routine. Mm -hmm. When dad and mom were going through a divorce, Everything changed because dad was a criminal, basically, and he was embezzling and he didn't want a divorce, not because he wanted to be in this family, but he didn't want people looking in a real way at his finances. Right. Mm -hmm. So he was making it really difficult for mom. And their divorce lasted like seven years. Yeah. So mom and dad are going through this epic divorce. She was pulling out Bibles like this thick and shit and like mm-hmm. had him open on the in the kitchen crying. And I'd be like, ah. there was a lot of mysticism happening during that time. Yeah. She was really calling on the <laughs> metaphysical arts to, to deal with some <laughs> shit. Intervene. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of candles, a lot of books, <laughs> a lot a of lot psychics of, coming to the a house. A lot of psychics. Mm-hmm. A lot of a spell lot of, work. Yeah. Didn't she do a, a Ouija thing with you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) So she was pulling out all the stops. Yeah. And she had to work. So now dad was pissed that she was going after money. So he was like withholding any money, the little money that he did give her. And so she had to work a lot. So then my instead of being in my nice cocoon with my mom, who was like me, my mom, Lady Timmy Alice, she just wasn't there anymore. So it was literally like someone took the rug out from underneath my legs. Mm -hmm. Not only was she not there anymore, but everyone else around me was going through some shit and didn't know how to deal with it. And so we were all just kind of doggy paddling like no one liked it. Now, this is all going on the transformation in me. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. So I want to explain this because I was born into a house where I knew I was loved. Mm -hmm. I was a little ball of happiness and joy. And then all these things are coming up like over the years, like dad, dad doing the dad thing, bringing in that negative energy, mom leaving me, everyone else in chaos, just like trying to survive. Mm -hmm. So then I, when I was five, I looked like I was like 13, right? Like, (laughs) and and I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's just the reality. I was always bigger than like, I remember looking at my fourth grade picture with my husband and I was like, that's not the teacher. That's me. (laughs) I always had a 40 year old's physique. And I don't say that in a bad way. But during that time, that chaotic time, and I didn't have structure or even like a parent, I was ju- I was eating whatever I want. I was lazy AF until Jennifer's like, get up, we're going somewhere. And I'm like, nah. you know what I mean? So I gained a lot of weight. Talk about school for you. <laughs> Ah, I was targeted, not just for my size, because, again, I was taller than my first grade teacher, not joking, and my weight, because I'm really heavy at this point. But also, I was not good at school learning. I'm dyslexic. I can't read or write phonetically. Every word is a sight word to me, so I can't sound things out. I had to leave the school that all my sisters went to to go to a, a school that had accommodations for people that couldn't follow the standard curriculum and learn. Mm -hmm. When did you start to actually activate your abilities in a conscious way? In other words, really invite spirit into your life and use your psychic abilities in a real way? Because you're kind of talking about awareness and acknowledgement But when did you actually start Mm -hmm. to use this ability that you have other than for (laughs) self-soothing? Because obviously you talked a little bit about protection and self-soothing. I think the way I would distinguish it is how did I decide to use this gift to interact with others with it? Right. Because to this point, it's been all about me. Like, how can I use it to benefit myself or how is it manifesting for myself? Right. So I had tarot cards when I was a teenager, and I would use the tarot to answer questions for my friends. Mm -hmm. So that in a generic way, in a kind of like regular, like learning way. Was it you like, did did you feel when you were, quote unquote, playing around with the cards that you were actually communicating with spirit? Or did it just feel like you were playing with cards? It felt like I was playing with cards. Okay. One part of it was that Sonia, a good, really good friend of mine, and I created this dialogue with each other that when we wanted to use our psychic ability, we would talk to each other and be like, I need your angels. 
Mm. Like we just started saying like me, Sonia and Megan would be like, we knew that there was something greater than us that we that each other could tap into. And so we would call each other and be like, I need your angels. Don't give me your Sonia shit. I need your angels right now. Like that would be the conversation. So we started doing that maybe like 13, 14, 15. And then I moved to Arizona and the first time I had the awareness that a, a spirit was coming to me to give a message to someone that I was looking at was in Arizona. And I was like, holy shit, that just happened. And how old were you? I was probably like 24. Okay. What happened? So I moved to Arizona. I had to make all new friends. And I made a friend with this woman named Amy. And she was she was a little older than me. She was probably like 26. And she was invited by this guy to go to this college party for whatever reason. There was this part, college party. Now, again, I slimmed down since then, but I've never been very body positive. And we go to this hotel room party. And these are girls skinny dipping, beautiful girls naked. And I am like, why the fuck am I at this party right now? It was so like, just not my scene because Mm -hmm. beautiful girls and here I am. So I was was smoking at the time. So I'm like, I'm just I'm just going to go smoke. And on top of the hotel was like a roof that you can like smoke and chill at. Right. So I went and I'm smoking and there was this girl there that was a part of this crew, but she wasn't involved in like the skinny dipping and the, and the drinking, whatever. So I'm sitting there with her and I'm like, Hey, what's up? And she's just like, Hey. And, um, I was picking up that she was sad and I was like, what's going on? And she was saying how, um, she was fighting with somebody or like a boyfriend or whatever. And I kept getting this image of this feeling of like, no, that's not why she's sad. And I just said it to her. I'm like, that's, I was like, that's not it. And um, <laughs> she said, because it was so strong. Yeah. And so I was just like, what I, I have nothing to lose. I have no, I have one friend here. Like, I'm never going to see these people again. I'm never coming to another one of these parties. I don't care. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to like shoot the shit. And I'm like, all right, someone <laughs> getting something incoming. This is what I'm getting. And she was like, okay, yeah, you're right. My friend died. And I just haven't gotten over it. And I'm like, okay. And she's telling me about a friend. And I keep seeing this noose Mm -hmm. in my head. You know, I gingerly asked her if it was suicide. She said yes. And I didn't tell her about the noose, but she told me how he was found and what had happened. And then I'm sitting there, I'm listening to her. And in my mind's eye, I see a woman carrying a baby. And the baby has an earring And it's really, really bright. And I'm seeing this scene in my head. I'm seeing it and I'm like, it looks like the mother carrying a baby. And he's like, and and it was like, and this earring's really big. And I'm like, earring. And it was like, yes. In my head, it was like, yes, yes. And I was like, okay, I'm not saying earring. (laughs) You know what I mean? I was like, I'm not saying earring. And I'm saying this to myself in my head, the way I would talk to like Lady Timmy Alice. Like in my head, I'm communing with whomever. I'm like, I'm not just fucking saying earring, dude. Like, you know, like that's not going to happen. And it just was like earring, 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 earring. And it wouldn't stop. Mm. And so I looked at her and I'm like, I am so sorry. And again, she doesn't know me. She doesn't know that I think I'm psych or like, I don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at her and I'm like, I have to tell you, earring. And she just started crying so hard. And she's like, I, I love dolphins. He bought me dolphin earrings. And one of him, one of the earrings I left with him and I kept the other one. And so he was buried with this dolphin earring that he had given her. And so that was the first. So I was like, holy shit. And so I, after Amy came, got me and she drove me home. And like the next day I called mom and I'm like, oh my God, mom, this happened. And then I have a friend, Candace, who's a, who was like a mentor to me. She was just a wonderful human being. Hippie. Like she had like patrolly and dreadlocks and she was just an amazing woman. And so I had called. Candace and I told her I'm like oh my god this happened to me last night and soon after that Candace's mom was sick and mm-hmm. she called me in the middle of the night and she was like Jill I have to go to California my mom isn't well she's like tell me what you see and she's like I need your help and so I got off the phone with her and I prayed and I saw I saw her making it to her mom's bedside her mom was going to be loopy but she would make it and before her mom was it was going to pass and that's basically what she was asking me so I called Candace back up and I'm like this is what it feels like to me go you'll make it in time and whatever and so that actually ended up happening so those experiences made me feel like okay everything that I've been experiencing it's something that other people can use. I don't know how to use it. I don't know how this is happening. I just know that like when people need it, it's happening. 
and mm-hmm. I can give them some kind of answers. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It was mm-hmm. like people were coming to me with it and I was just, it, it had an opportunity to be like, okay, here. Similar in, in a very mundane way, similar to like, I'm really tall walking in the grocery store. If I see someone short reaching, I just hand it to them and keep walking. That's how it felt. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? It didn't feel like anything extraordinary. Like I can get it. Here you go. And I just keep walking. That's how it felt to me. For people who might be listening, who are wanting to get in touch with their angels or tap into their angels, you describe kind of in your teenage years where you started to intentionally do that. Mm -hmm. For someone who wanted to start doing that, do you have any tips for someone who wants to start, quote unquote, tapping into their angels? What I learned, honestly, about this is saying I want it. Being like, just saying like, this is what I want. I want to do that. And then letting that go and watching how it manifests. I didn't have any notion of what it looked like, Mm -hmm. right? I didn't say like, this is how it's going to be. This is how it's going to feel. It just pops up and and it just manifests in certain ways. And that changes. So you have to just say, this is what I want. Say it out loud, say it to whomever, and then just watch it happen. Okay. How do you know when a thought is coming from spirit versus Jilly Brain? So Jilly Brain is very, very emotional, Mm -hmm. right? Spirit doesn't come with emotion to me. Interesting. So a lot of times, which is really embarrassing, is that when I'm reading for someone, they'll be crying and I, I will... And I might look very insensitive because I'm just... It, spirit does not come with emotion. And so I'm just... It's just a matter of fact. A shocking revelation of that is when it was the summer, July 2016, and I was in the car and I thought, oh, I didn't talk to mom today. I'm going to be fine if she dies. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, it came, it was like a knowing, and I felt so bad for thinking that, for that being in my head. And, you know, maybe like eight to 10 weeks later, she had passed. Mm -hmm. I didn't know she was dying. I didn't know that that was going to come. But that came without without any emotion. Without any emotion. So when a thought Mm -hmm. comes into your head with no emotion, you know it's not your thought. Uh, Right. Because your (laughs) thoughts are laden with emotion. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And it Mm -hmm. occurs to me that I'm not an overly emotional person. So Mm -hmm. the way I differentiate might be different from the way you differentiate, might be the way from another person differentiates. What's What's an indicator for you that it's spirit? What I do is I manually push a thought out of my head. If it keeps coming back, I know it's spirit. I know spirit will be very persistent with me. I like that. Another thing that I do if I'm like confused or something, I think to myself, why am I thinking this? And then I backtrack to see the origin of the thought. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do that that with anxiety. Yeah, Mm -hmm. to me that it's comforting and then I can, gives me the opportunity to get to know how I think. Right. Like if you you have a a song running through your head Mm -hmm. and you have no reason to have that particular song in your head. Especially mm-hmm. if you're thinking about the lyrics. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's happened I do. to me I know too. Exactly yeah. What and you, and mean. you know, sometimes you'd be like, oh, I just saw Buddy Holly on my Facebook feed for whatever reason. But sometimes mm-hmm. there's no reason for you to have a certain thought. And then you know, maybe it's a sign from spirit. Interesting. Right. I, I like that. I, th- I think that's kind of helpful too to people who are listening because it all comes back to the way you think as an individual. Mm-hmm. Right. Because and the, there's no one way. There's no one way. It's a process of self-discovery, and that's why it's so hard, because there's no manual for how you think and how you you yourself can communicate with spirit. There's no manual for, for you. You're your manual. You have to right. go inside and figure it out. And the only thing you know is what you know. Mm-hmm. So when you know something, you have to say, well, why do I know it? Right. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it can be difficult for even experienced psychic mediums to be able to translate the messages that come through from spirit. Uh huh. Can you share any time that you have had trouble translating messages from spirit? Yes. Okay. The Joe situation oh, when we were looking but- for a lawyer. <laughs> That's so stupid. I kept feeling my husband's sister. And so I say, Jen, I feel like I have to call Kelly. I feel like Kelly or Kelly's husband knows a lawyer. Because Kelly is your husband's sister. Yes. And what did you say? I said, Kelly, why do you need to call Kelly? My husband knows a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that happened. Right. So instead of you having to call your husband's sister, what spirit was trying to tell you was your sister's husband. Sister's husband. Yeah. Mm, that is funny. So do you feel like you still have bouts where it's more difficult for you to translate spirit? Or do you think that's all in the past? Oh, no. Yeah, it depends on where I'm at, where my head's at, like what's happening in my life. Like, I know that there are things coming in, but translating it could be difficult. Right. Right. Would you say that that's a common misconception about psychics, that they always just know and that they don't have to work to to translate messages from spirit? Yeah. Yeah. There are so many different kinds of people that I read for, but a lot of times I will get someone who wants me to do tricks. Yeah, I know the type. You know what I mean? That sits with their arms crossed and they're like, okay. like, impress me. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm like, well, that's not how this works. It's an exchange of energy. <laughs> you know, you can't sit there with your, like, all bundled right, up all and expect up. me to pull some shit out of you. Right. Yeah, I'm not going to pull a rabbit out of your ass. That's just not what's going to happen. You have to give me something to work with here. So, yeah, definitely. And, again, spirit uses my own circle reference to communicate those complicated situations. So, like, one of our patrons, I kept seeing my problem sibling in my head and feeling those emo emotions. Mm -hmm. So, I was like, dude, you have some asshole sibling in your life. And she was able to say whether or not that was true or false. But those are the kinds of things that you have to say, this is what I'm experiencing. And again, I just give that opportunity for the client to translate it because it's not for me. It's not something I'm translating for myself. I'm just the male person. But when it comes to messages for me, it could be more difficult. And I often will say things out loud or try to figure them out, depending on where my headspace is. And in that translation process, you've talked about seeing things in your head, seeing like in your vision. You've talked mm -hmm. about hearing like a voice, like earring. What mm -hmm. other ways do you get information? A knowing, mm -hmm. like it just like a smack in the face. Mm -hmm. It will be like, boom, don't like this is what you need to know songs in my head or th words, dialogue in my head or outside of my head, I would say um, my mind's eye, like I can see mom shaking her head at me like, nope, mm -hmm. nope, 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 nope. Or the feeling that mom's there mm -hmm. with me. Okay. It's really interesting. You and I talk about creating space. And what I say creating space for a spirit is to familiarize yourself with the way it feels to be with spirit, like just how that feels. So a lot of times I will feel like I'm with my mom when I'm doing something. Like mm -hmm. I was telling you yesterday, I was playing a game with my in-laws and I was getting so mad because <laughs> they win and they win and they laugh in your face. <laughs> and I knew I was getting so fired up and I just felt mom being like, Jilly, mm -hmm. this is just a game and she was just like pouring ice on the fumes <laughs> because I was getting so mad and so competitive uh -huh. but you can just feel like how it feels uh -huh. when she's there with you you grew up watching movies and you yes. have a lot of movie references and I know when we're out on the road together, you will sometimes get a movie scene, a scene from a movie in your head. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that that's another way that spirit will often give you information using your own frame of reference. And I think that's really interesting. Using mom's library of videos, yes. VHSs. Yes. Isn't that, it's like a catalog of symbols for me. Yeah. Yes, exactly. The same way tarot mm -hmm. is just a catalog of symbols. But I think what's super interesting about that is that people who might be listening, who want to explore and develop their own language, right? Their own mm -hmm. catalog of symbols have to draw on what they know. You can't do it best by trying to memorize someone else's symbols. You have to know what you know and use what you know. It's about your own frame of reference. What's so funny and interesting about it is that like you and I, like years ago, would talk about like, I want I want my own symbols because we watch Kim Russo and she'll be like, oh, that's my symbol. Yes. I'm like, I want my own symbols. And it wasn't until I was like, I'm doing this right. that I realized like I do have my own yeah. symbols. I just didn't realize it. I never gave myself the opportunity to be like, OK, speak to me, spirit, and then giving me symbols. Right. Right. It's so stupid. Now it's like, what What was I thinking? Right. But it's still a process because we, we're still stumped sometimes and we're still figuring it out because it's complicated. My husband's sister. 
But even it's like you said before, communication, like you and I can be having a conversation, like literally having yes. a conversation and your intent and what you're trying to communicate is different than what I'm picking exactly. up. Like I'm not picking up what you're laying and we down. We can see each other. <laughs> we are both. We are both real. of the flesh. And still, mm -hmm. like there's miscommunication. So, of course, there's going to be miscommunication between a spirit and you. Yeah, exactly. We've talked a lot about your awareness at a young age of spirit. And we've talked a lot about how you learned to activate and be intentional about it and about how you used it not only in your own life for some self-soothing, but to deliver messages to to people. How do you communicate with spirit today? Like, what does that look like for you? Like for yourself, I know you read for people. We all know that you, that you do readings. But for yourself, what does that look like to live in communication with spirit? My view on myself is very limited. Like I feel like every time that I need to accomplish something, I use spirit to help me do it. Mm. No matter what it is, if I'm writing something, like today we we're talking about doing interviews, I asked Larry King to inspire me to help me deliver a good interview, mm. right? Like I'm always using spirit. I'm always reaching if I if we're writing something for the book. I'm like, "Okay, Nora Ephron, need you girl, get up on, you know, you know what I mean? Like, get up on Why? It. You, you really ask specific spirits to come and influence yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. If I have to give a presentation at work, I will be like, okay, I need you guys here. I need, like, give me something. I need to impress. I need to be coherent. I need to stay focused. And so I call on different energies to help me get through whatever task I need to do. Absolutely. I, I, if it was just Jill, mm -hmm. if I was only bringing me to a situation, what a fucking mess. <laughs> that is all. It's like, <laughs> honestly, I'm not kidding. I am not kidding you. And I say that with love. I don't say it to discount me. I say it with love. <laughs> I'm just a ball of goofy, loving mess. It's just the truth. I wonder how your experience going through school influenced that sort of reliance on spirit. <laughs> yeah, because I can't read. You guys have you to can understand read. something. You can read. Stop it. No, I remember this. This is a true story. Okay. Because this, <laughs> this cracks everybody up. So in kindergarten, we're supposed to learn how to read these Sam books, yes. which is... Sam was a lion. He had very simple adventures, very few words on every page. Sam books. And, and, and you had to read it. You had to read it. I could not read. Like, everyone was excited about Sam. I wasn't because I couldn't read Sam. So in at, at a early age, they realized that, like, mom realized I couldn't read because she would hold me up above her head with the Sam book. And I would be like, she would have me above her and I would be looking down with the Sam book. And if I couldn't read a word, she would, like, pretend to drop me. Mm -hmm. Which was not a good motivator because I just liked being like, sure, oh, sure. Getting she was playing with you. So that didn't help. Yeah. But I couldn't read it. So at a very young age, they recognized that. And so I was staying after school with the teacher to read the book. So part of the assignment was to understand to what was happening in my Jilly mind in kindergarten. Yeah. And she would be like, read it out. She would like, read it to yourself and then tell me what you read. So I would, I'm looking at the book. And I'm seeing the, the lion yeah, there's is sitting down. <laughs> so I was like, the lion and sitting down. And she'd be like, okay, read it out loud. I can't read it out loud. And she's like, well, how the hell do you know that the lion? I'm like, because the lion is sitting yeah, there are down. Pictures. Like, I'm like, what did you get? <laughs> so it was like this big, like the woman hated me, but I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know why she was so mad at me. I'm like, well, what, what are you what is it that you think you're getting? Because this is what I got. Like, that was my whole. Right. But fast forward to, I don't know, middle school, when you were reading texts that had no pictures, you could not read the words on the page, but you could still explain what happened in the text. Because you don't have to read all the words. <laughs> you don't. You can just read a very little bit and understand the, the gist. I think that even then you were relying on spirit, like to fill in the blanks, don't you? A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I want to explain what that looks like, because for me, even when it comes to people, if you turn off the words, you don't need the words if you get what's happening, right? So like spirit doesn't communicate with me in words. 
spirit communicates with me with energy and spirit communicates with behaviors and like showing me things from like movies or whatever. So if you turn off the words, even as a person, if if you're trying to be like, oh, does he love me? Just turn off the words. Don't listen to the words. Mm. The truth doesn't have too many words. Like there, there was an instant where I was um, in an argument with someone and there was this whole like book. And I'm like, dude, the truth doesn't have that many words. You don't have to explain the truth like that. It's just truth. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, just turn off the words. And so because of that, I use the energy of situations. Mm -hmm. So like if and I always say like Luke Skywalker is the exact same energy as Harry Potter. Different words, different text the exact same energy. Mm. It's the hero story. He's an orphan Mm -hmm. raised by his his uncle. And it's the exact same story. Different words, different contexts, but the same energy. Very, very interesting. What insights do you have for people who are wanting to develop their ability to communicate with spirit? I honestly believe that Everyone is already communicating in spirit in their own way. Mm-hmm. And it's just saying, okay, how am I doing it? What does that look like? How is it manifesting for me? We can talk about how we come at it, but everyone is so different and there's so many nuances. Like the way you're able to walk away from something and it just falls into place. I am the person that has to keep hitting my head against the wall until my head hurts. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I'm different in that respect than you. Like you can just like sleep on something and it comes to you. Mm-hmm. Whereas I I am like an active problem solver. I feel like if someone sat down and took inventory of their supernatural experiences and then expanded on that and said, like, when did I feel like I was being helped, even if I couldn't recognize what that looks like, that may be helpful as well. Okay. If there is one takeaway, one takeaway that you want to give people after hearing this, what would the one takeaway be? You're not alone in any respect. Like your life does not happen in a vacuum Mm. and the impact of who you are lasts way after you're gone. Mm. When you think about how you're interacting, even in the most mundane ways, just think about that because that is a ripple effect, whether you like it or not. Wow. I love you so much. I really enjoyed this conversation. I really think our listeners are going to get a lot out of it. So thank you for being so open. I am your biggest fan. I love you. Oh, I stop. am honored to be on this journey with you. Um, Aww, thank you for bringing me along. <laughs> dragging thank me. Thank you for bringing me along. <laughs> and um, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for letting me drag you. Mm-hmm. Good point. All right. Is there anything that you want to close with as far as where people can... Tune in. Yeah, do it. I was just going to cue you. <laughs> oh, were you? Mm-hmm. Well, check out our website, commonmystics.net. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Common Mystics Podcast. L- tune in wherever you're hearing your favorite podcasts. But if you happen to be on Apple, please leave us a positive review so other people can find us. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good night. Bye.